One piece of evidence that shows that a chemical reaction has taken place is the production of a gas. In this lab activity, you'll both produce a gas with your students and then collect that gas and show that its presence is actually there, even though you can't see it. The equipment you'll need for this lab activity includes a container which you can attach a hose to. Now, we happen to have access to these flasks here which have a sidearm side on them. They're called sidearm flasks. And you definitely do not need a sidearm flask. However, you'll need a container that you can attach a hose to. Uh, and so something like a, uh, a container like this uh, uh, from corn syrup or another plastic bottle uh, which has a lid on it will also work. Now, with the sidearm flask, we're able to attach the hose directly to this port here on the side of the flask. Uh, with a container like the corn syrup uh, container, you'll need to first uh, drill a hole uh, in, the, in the lid and then insert the tubing uh, down in that hole. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be airtight, the fit of your tubing here as long as it fits snug and the least amount of uh, leakage is best but it does not have to be airtight. You could take like some putty uh, or a little bit of clay and pack around your uh, hose there and it would work just fine. In addition to the uh, flask or the container uh, with a piece of tubing attached to it, you'll also need a container in into which you'll catch your gas and what we're using here is just an empty plastic jug and it's ideal if it does have a lid. Now this could also be uh, a jar, uh, any sort of container, but it's ideal that you have a lid that will uh, fit back on it. And then uh, we'll also need one other uh, container and today what I've got here is just a, a plastic trash can. Um, the reaction that we'll use here uh, for this activity is the vinegar and uh, baking soda reaction uh, that will produce carbon dioxide. Now this reaction is actually a double uh, set of reactions uh, but that's a little beyond uh, the scope of uh, the activity here. Uh, just know that the reaction between the sodium bicarbonate which is the baking soda and the acetic acid which is vinegar will produce carbon dioxide gas or CO2 gas. So um, what you do first is you'll take some vinegar and you pour down into into the flask and the amount here uh, vary upon the size of your container and it's kind of a fun thing to do with your students is just have them suggest amounts and then just see what happens. Now the outcome, uh, the products from this uh, reaction are certainly safe. There's no problems with them. Uh, you need to know of course that the vinegar uh, be, it being an acid will burn and sting if one gets it in their eyes and therefore you'll just need to be careful of that. Uh, if th someone does get it in their eye, just take them over to a sink and have them wash their eye well uh, with water uh, to get the uh, vinegar out of their eyes. Uh, so first uh, we'll take some vinegar and we'll pour it into the bottom of the container. Uh, then uh, another item that you're going to need to have handy is just uh, a plastic or latex uh, exam glove. And what we'll do with the exam glove is take and pour some baking soda into down into the fingers of the exam glove. Okay, so we'll have the exam glove with baking soda down in the fingers of it and then vinegar in the bottom of our, our flask here and then we're going to stretch the exam glove over the opening of the flask. Okay, and it's going to be hard for me to do this single-handed here, but we'll have that stretched over the top. Now the goal is to not get the soda down into the vinegar uh, before you're ready to begin collecting the gas. So this, in this way, we'll keep the soda down in the fingertips of the glove until we're all set. Okay, so we'll have that ready there. Okay, then over here we need to uh, prepare uh, the, pl the jug that we're going to collect the gas in. Now, uh, because the gas that's produced is invisible, we can't actually see it, uh, we can't just take the hose and hook to the jug because we already have some air in our jug. Uh, so what we'll do 
is we're going to head and we'll fill our trash can here oh about three-fourths full of water so you have an empty clean trash can or a tub or anything something, something that's taller uh, tends to work better and narrow and we'll take our jug and go ahead and fill it completely with water and then we'll take it and invert the jug turn it upside down into our water that's already in there in hopes that we keep we maintain the jug being full of water okay so we've got the jug down in in the container with the opening of the jug now submerged it's underneath water level and then we'll take the end of our tubing here, our hose, and we'll go down into the water, down where the tubing then is uh, inserted partially, part way up into the opening of the jug. So that when the gas is produced over here with our reaction, the gas then will come up to the top of the flask, travel through the tube, we won't see it now because it's invisible, but the tube will begin to bubble on the end and we want to catch those bubbles inside inside our jug and as the gas comes into the jug the water will then be forced out of the jug and the water level on the side of the trash can will rise so we need to be careful that you're certain that this won't overflow and if you think it might you might want to put another uh, container uh, down around the trash can so uh, to begin the reaction, you'll have the uh, glove here. If you're working with the smaller container, and you would have the glove uh, uh, here, you wouldn't. The, this would not be on the container. The lid will be off, and you'll have uh, your uh, glove ready. You may have to use a rubber band around the glove to 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 keep that in place. Uh, then as soon as you dump in the soda, or in the case up here, okay, you raise the fingers up, the soda will fall down into the vinegar, we'll get the bubbling will start, fizzing bubbling will start, and the gas will move. If you're using the smaller container here, what you'll do as, as soon as you can use the glove, or you can, if you like, you can just directly dump in some of the soda here, but you want to get that lid on there as quickly as possible to allow the gas to travel on through the hose and not escape out here into the atmosphere around your container. So if you're working with a flask here, you'll dump in the soda that was once in the fingertips. You'll just raise this up. The soda will fall down into the vinegar. Gas comes through the hose. A bubble, bubble up inside. Uh, your empty jug in here is filled with water, but then uh, the jug, uh, the water will be forced out. It'll be full of CO2 gas now. Now, uh, important thing to know is that the carbon dioxide gas is more dense than air, so that if we just lift up on the jug here above the level of the water and we keep it upside down, all the CO2 gas will come out the bottom of the jug. And so what we'll want to do, and you'll see in the little video clip after this, is that you'll, you'll have your uh, student reach down, either put their hand, their fingers over the mouth of the jug, or they'll take the lid and go ahead and slip it on the underneath surface, uh, the opening of the jug, so that when they lift it out, all the gas is uh, inside the jug. And so if everything goes right, and you may end up producing more gas then you have space in your jug and that's fine it'll just bubble out around and bubble on out and you'll just have, have lost a little bit there but hopefully you'll end up with a container that then is full of uh, carbon dioxide gas and that's when you take it uh, to prove that you actually have some gas in there there's some different things you do and you'll see in the video clip which follows is we'll take then and carefully we'll open our container here and then pour the gas out onto some candles and you'll see that those candles will be extinguished uh, because the CO2 gas, the candles cannot uh, continue to burn without oxygen. We're pouring this carbon dioxide gas heavily on top of them and the, the flames will go out. Uh, another thing you can do if you have an open container 
and you can just pour and fill that container with CO2 gas and then take a lit candle or a lit match and carefully lower it in and you can see how much CO2 is actually uh, in your container. So we'll uh, transition now to the videotape of some students actually completing this lab. <laughs> you have enough? Yeah, I'm Candles out, your wish doesn't come true. Yeah. Get that one. Yeah. Yeah. 